Well, hey there, everybody. So today we're just going to do one exercise, and that's going to be in Chapter 16. And all we're going to do is basically go to this website, uh, and you know, once you get there, you'll get to a page like this, and you'll download the ratchet plate file. Uh, and after doing that, I'm, I'll show you what it looks like upon opening. <clears throat> uh, so you get this, and then you're going to take that sketch and use it to make a 3D recreation of this part. So basically, I'm going to take this sketch here and copy it by hitting Control-C. And then I'm going to create a new part. And I'll start a new sketch using the front plane. <coughs> I'll hit Control V to paste, and I'm going to paste it out here in space for now, just so we can kind of get a feel, because we'll have to constrain in the rest. As you see, it currently says we need 84 dimensions, so <laughs> we're missing quite a few. Okay, so we've already lost, just doing a coincidence, the origin, we've lost a tidbit, but that's okay. Okay, so I constrained it in. Oh man, it says we need 75 still. Okay, so uh, we don't have our 20 degree dimension. But I guess first we could probably do a horizontal here. Man, this is why I hate these little center lines. They're kind of just in the way. So what I would advise actually is just deleting them. Um, you know, it really doesn't make much sense when you're doing a 3D model to have just ones for aesthetic sake. <clears throat> uh, so instead, we'll do a coincident with this line to the center. And we'll do the same with this line to the center. And it's starting to deform, so we'll go ahead and put a horizontal constraint on both of these. And let's see, I believe other than that, we can put this 20 in. Uh, so we've got our 6, 5. And basically from here, we're just going to kind of go and diagnose each thing to make sure that it matches. So I'm going to just go and set each one of these to be equal to the last. Unfortunately, when you copy and paste from AutoCAD, you would think because it's drawn, they would pull that information. But... It has to exist for it to pull it. So uh, basically what we just have to do is go through and add all these associations that, you know, when you're drawing it, it, it kind of will pull automatically normally. But, you know, this is about all you can really do here. Uh, and then this should be not needed. Okay. <clears throat> so then we can set this edge to equal the last one. All right, so make sure we had something there. Uh, so next we can take this point and actually, you know what? I want to make this circle full extent, so I'm just going to keep spamming it until it goes all the way around because it's silly to have an incomplete circle here. It makes no sense. Okay, so I guess we'll do the same with the other one. And just keep on going until you see that last part where it finally connects to the other end. Okay. <clears throat> so now that you can see it a little better, uh, you can tell basically what we need to do is go through and make each point coincident where it should be. So basically that's all I'm going to do is go to each vertex and stick it on this circle. 
some of them may already have that constraint still. Uh, that's fine. Just do the ones that let you do. In case you're wondering, though, uh, as you see, this is a lot of work. It would have been much easier just to redraw this. Um, so where possible, you know, redraw it. Don't just reuse old 2D stuff. Silly. Uh, but sometimes you have to. And a lot of times if you're doing that, you're not going to actually even bother with doing constraints. You're just going to copy and paste it and use it as is. And and that's kind of a morally gray uh, area. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do in that regard. But, you know, obviously one is way more effective than the other. And I'm not sure that I see a circle anywhere. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to, I don't know what happened to that. Whew. It's a mess. Whatever happened. Okay. We'll just re extend it. At some point, it compressed and. You know what? I'm not going to judge it. Okay. And then I deleted that dimension earlier, so I'm just going to add it back. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we still need quite a bit. Basically, I think we'll need to add in coincidence of every line to the axis. And, you know, it's basically just a bunch of stuff like this. Feels redundant, but you've got to have that structure put in. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it took that one, so I'm going to redo it. And this one shouldn't need it because it's horizontal. Basically, you're more or less just locating these lines. And by doing so, you're actually kind of implying that angle that we put on earlier as well. That one's tough to tell, but... I think it's this one. Yeah. And last but not least, I believe that's the last one. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. We've got a few more things we need here. <laughs> And it has to do with that part. <clears throat> so let's locate this midpoint to the origin. Uh, and let's give some vertical constraint here. All right, I'm still tugging around trying to find what else we need. Sometimes it can be hard to find what it is. If you notice, for whatever reason, it won't turn black, whatever is constrained and not. So it makes it a little harder to tell what's going on, really. All you can really do is <clears throat> go through and tug each point. So I guess that's what we'll do. And we're bound to find it at some point, right? I'm starting to think it might be something to do with that circle, like we may have two of it or something from whenever I extended it. But since we're so far committed on grabbing every point, we might as well finish it off. <clears throat> okay, so I'm looking for an extra. We've got all of our coincidence all around. We've got them inside as well. Hmm. 
Hmm. Got an equal there, equal there. Not that. Hmm. I honestly don't know what it could be on this one. <laughs> Let's make sure we have all our dimensions. It appears we do. Wondering, like, maybe one of these circles isn't concentric to the other. But they already share the same center point, as I figured. <clears throat> hmm. Well, this might be one of those cases of, you know, it's really hard to say. It's just one dimension we're missing, but obviously I've tugged on it. Every which direction. Ah, there it is. Finally. Perpendicular. So now, even though it doesn't show it as black, we have our pen. We've got fully constrained. It's fully defined. This is one of those problems with um, drawing with 2D stuff. It never really likes to show the right color. And I would imagine it's because this is a terrible practice. <laughs> so it wants you to know, like, hey, bad news bears. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, in order to be a little extra, because, again, I was mentioning the moral correctness of doing things, Go in and choose these circles and toggle construction on the format. Um, they kind of drew them with the intent of them being construction looking. But now when I click, I don't have to choose every tooth individually. Um, so then I can pull my dialog box so you can see it. I can go in and do a normal extrusion, give it our 0.25 thickness. And we now have there... 2D design reuse uh, ratchet plate. And that's going to be it for this one. Uh, so everybody, y'all take it easy.